Well, good afternoon, everyone. I'm happy to join with you today and talk about social media and research. We have quite a bit of content today. Just a little bit about some disclosures and acknowledgments. I have been presenting uh, in this area for a, a good amount of time, and some of the materials have been used in other professional presentations, and I just wanted to acknowledge those. I do have no conflicts of interest to disclose. Just a little bit about me. Uh, I hold an endowed chair position at the University of Wisconsin South, which is a polytechnic institution. I've been involved in internet-related research since 1998 when I wrote my dissertation, and those are kind of the dark days now of, of the internet. Things have changed dramatically since the late 90s, and so some of what I talk about today, I, I really want to focus on the changes of where we are now in the midst of social media, big data, and what those things mean for us in terms of research and clinical research in particular. So we have quite a bit of, of terrain to, to get through. I continue to serve on an IRE as a vice chair. I also do some administrative work for our IRB at UW Stout. And I have been active with the Secretary's Advisory Committee to the Office for Human Research Protection over the years where we wrote some recommendations around Internet research specifically for IRBs. And so I, I have I've been working in this area for, for many, many years and all walks of, of research life. While I personally am not a clinical researcher, I'm a philosopher by training, I have spent a lot of time with researchers from, from various entities. Our objective for today, we will look at some common IRB perspectives in using social media and research. We'll look at some recruitment forms using social media and look at some models of informed consent. And then we'll look at some examples of language that IRBs across the country have been developing to, to use in consent forms, to use in protocols around issues of privacy and confidentiality. One of the things that we're really seeing is, is a change in the language, how we talk about our research, how we talk about our data storage, our data processing. So there, there's quite a bit that we want to think about in terms of what we tell our participants and what we as researchers want to do with our, with our data. We have more and more data than uh, we ever thought we would. We're living in an age of big data. And so this affects how we on IRBs and as researchers deal with our data and deal with issues of consent and recruitment and et cetera. So let me move on. Now, there's a lot of text on this slide, and we don't have to read through all of it. This came from the Secretary's Advisory Committee that I mentioned earlier. So in 2013, after a couple of years of, of meeting with folks from all walks of the research enterprise, uh, including folks at the FDA, the NIH, and so forth, we came out with a set of recommendations, and the URL is at the end of this presentation for you. But basically what we wanted to do is look at the, the whole of Internet research. What is this looking like? Where are we at 2013 in terms of forms of research that are taking place, and particularly those that are human subject research? So what you'll see here is a, a range of areas that we see as important to researchers at this point in time. Now, what you'll see as you come down the list a little bit here is there's others. We list this, this very specific word, others, because we're really seeing a lot of, of these emerging forms of research, cross-platform research, things like mobile research, and, and so those are being considered as forms of Internet research in, in its broadest sense. So throughout today, when I refer to Internet research, I'm, I'm using that as an umbrella term, and social media is just one piece of Internet research. To broadly define this, we can think about the Internet as both a tool for research and a medium as a locale of research. So tool for research meaning things like our search engines, our databases, catalogs, data sets, and so forth. And then we can think about the Internet as a medium or a locale of research. And we're seeing more and more research take place in both of these domains. And what we're also seeing is that line between tool for research and medium 
our locale of research, they're starting to blur quite a bit in the face of social media, mobile apps, cell devices, and so forth. 